Hello guys, Shan here from BalanceBlending.com and before we get into the tutorial, let's take a quick look into what we'll be learning today. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create this. Chapter 1, we will take a look at the required blender settings and layout. Chapter 2, we'll be creating a procedural cloud shader. In the final part of this video, we'll be setting up the lighting. Apart from this, if you are interested to learn how I made the preview animations, then please leave a comment and I will make a part 2 video to this tutorial explaining the animation and post-processing stuff. Open up a new file in Blender, delete the default cube, select it and press X to delete. Let's switch to the shading workspace. In the render tab, we can see we are in the render engine EV and that's what we want for this tutorial. The cloud shader that we'll be making is a world shader. So set it to world. Make sure you're in look dev. Click on this drop down and enable scene lights and the scene world. This is important because if we leave that unchecked, then any changes we make in the background here will not be reflected in the viewport. As soon as you change something here, it updates. That's, that's what makes EV so powerful. First of all, in the render tab, we'll be using the bloom screen space reflections. Under volumetrics, make sure the tile size is 2 pixel. Make sure volumetric lighting is turned on and volumetric shadows is turned on just adding in more realism of course the more things you add onto your ev render presets the slower and more memory intensive the render becomes so make sure you there's a balance and a good trade-off select the the default light that comes with the blender starter file that is the point lamp and interestingly we will be using the point lamp for this tutorial and we will not be using any other source of light. The point lamp works really well in EV, especially for volumetric renders. So one thing you need to do is make sure that you go into the object data for the lamp and increase the power to something like 5000. It works well with, for this tutorial, but do your experiment for your scene and check out which value will be perfect for your scene. Now I'll be getting into the nodes. But before that, make sure you have Node Wrangler add-on installed. Go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, click on the search bar and write Node Wrangler. Yeah, it comes by default, I guess, with 2.8 and you can enable it. It's just a way to handle nodes and make things quicker with shortcuts and keyboard bindings. First of all, delete the background node because we are not going to use a surface material because as I said, it's going to be volumetric clouds, so we do not need a surface output. So press X to delete the background node. We will now add a principled volume node. So press Shift A, Shader, Principled Volume. Connect the volume. Color should be completely white. The density right now is very high, so set it to something really low, like 0.1. Now you can see the point lamp is affecting the volume properly. But we won't set the density like that. We will use a noise texture to affect it. Shift A texture, noise texture. The noise texture will act as the cloud texture. We won't be using any other texture because it works pretty well just with the default noise texture. So select the noise texture and press Ctrl T. This adds two more nodes the texture coordinate node. By default, we have the generated texture coordinate plugged in and we will go with that, it works pretty well. The mapping node will not be used right now, but if you want to animate the clouds, then the mapping node comes really handy. Plug in the factor output into the density and you can see something changed, but it's not very visible. So the main reason for that is the noise texture does not have much contrast. So press Shift A. Converter, Color Ramp, 
So we'll be using a color ramp to add contrast to the noise texture. Now to add contrast just use these sliders until your until the viewport. Once you're done with that you can see the scale is really high so it doesn't look anything like clouds. You need to change the scale here set it to something really low like 0.05. The detail on the other hand needs to be pretty high. Something along 9 or 10 works pretty well. Experiment with those as always. Now we will add some more functionality. First of all, the point lamp is what is lighting the whole scene. To check that, grab the point lamp and move it around and you can see nice volumetric effects. It already looks pretty good. But there are two main problems. First of all, the density parameter is gone, so you cannot control the density anymore. So we need to add our own functionality to control the density parameter. So press Shift A, Converter, Math Node, and then you can drop that in there. Set it to Multiply. And now this value slider is what controls the density. I've found two works pretty well, but for your scene, it's up to you. The problem we will be solving next is the negative space around the clouds looks pretty dull. We can change that by clicking on this slider and just making it a little bit whiter. Whiter. I don't know if that's a word, but you get the idea because black means completely zero and that affects the density. But this is a tedious process in my opinion. I would much rather use some math. To do that, add a math node. Shift A, Converter, Math. Place it in there. A value of 0.5 is really high for this kind of function. So set it really really low, like I mean really low, like 0 0.002. I found out it works well. Now making any changes to this slide to this value using the slider is very tedious. So we have a workaround for that. Just add a math node. Connect the output here. Set it to divide. And the value should be preferably the order of the value you have set there. So I have four places after the decimal. So in the divide node you must have four zeros after the one. What it does is it makes the slider much more granular. That's that. And you can skip that if you want to, but that adds a little bit of proper user experience. So I would call it a finished cloud shader now. Make sure that the grid floor and the axis are enabled. This makes it easier to navigate the volumetric scene. Next, select the point clamp, select the point lamp and set the color to something sci-fi like purple. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to add a curve in the scene, align it with one of the cloud formations and then we will instance the point lamp onto the curve and thus giving a pretty good lighting effect. So let's start. Add a Bezier curve, press Shift A, Curve, Bezier, use S to scale, R to rotate, G to grab and translate, and hitting Tab on the keyboard, you can see we are in the edit mode, you can also access the edit mode here, then you, you see there are handles, handles on the curve, and you can use it to further define the shape. So let's align it with one of the cloud formations. Once you're happy with the placement, we can move on with the next steps. The origin of the lamp and the origin of the curve has to be at the same point. Select the point lamp, press Shift S, selection to cursor. That moves the point lamp along with its origin to the cursor. Select the curve, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now we need to parent the point lamp to the curve. Select the point lamp first, press shift, select the curve, press ctrl p on the keyboard and set parent to object. Next, select the curve, go to the context, under instancing select verts. Nothing happens right now 
because this is a curve and it does not have vertices. To make sure this works, you have to convert it to a mesh first. So select the curve, right click, convert to mesh. So let us repeat the same thing with a blue point lamp on a different cloud formation to kind of balance the color scheme. Before that, to have a good look at this, press the show overlays button and you can see it has this amazing looking lighting effect. One thing to note here is if you come down here in the shader node, there's a anisotropy property to the principled volume. This kind of determines how much the light will spread through the cloud. So if you increase this value, it gets more and more directional. Directional in the sense that it does not spread in too many directions. So play with it and I think a value of 0.6 works pretty well. So now we are done and I will just show you a time lapse of adding the blue light because uh, it's the same thing being repeated.